Hello there, I'm Lee Warder for Kick Guru, and this gaming PC is a Dino PC Primal GT5. Uh, before I go through the bits and pieces inside it, let's just kick off GTA 5 Benchmark. Get that running as it loads up and goes along. Um, that's running at full HD with the settings cranked up pretty much to maximum quality, apart from anti aliasing, because that's just a graphics card killer. Uh, right, so as that runs, we'll see how that goes. So the components, from the top we've got a Core i5 6600K, so that's Skylake, it's overclocked. So instead of 3.9 gigahertz max turbo, you get 4.7 gigahertz. It's got Corsair liquid cooling, 16 gig Corsair DDR4, Gigabyte Z170 XPSLI motherboard, uh, Palette GeForce GTX 970 graphics card, 4 gig of memory. You may have um, seen there that the... Uh, the settings for GTA 5, which lists how much memory is um, is being used, actually it's using 3.3 gigabytes of memory. When you go 4K and if you start cranking anti-aliasing, you can go to 12 or 15 gigabytes. That's multi-graphics card setup required. Um, this graphics card, on the other hand, if you're running at full HD, absolutely fine. In fact, very nice indeed. Uh, storage, you've got um, a 120 gigabyte Samsung 850 Evo SSD, which is for your Windows uh, and also your, your basic... Um, it's 64-bit Windows 10 home instantly. Uh, so that's your, your Windows and also things like Steam. Uh, very likely you're going to end up installing games on your uh, bulk storage drive, which is one terabyte Seagate SSHD. Uh, onboard audio. The case NZXT N450 Noctis matte black with a window and this uh, funky underlighting. Uh, power supply Corsair 650W CS modular. Windows 10 has mentioned, you do get McAfee antivirus, one year, one user license, and you get a three year warranty. Uh, so, all very nice. And as you can see, it's chugging through uh, uh, GTA 5 without any problems whatsoever. Frame rates in that were 68 average, minimum 16, although the minimum, it it's momentary um, because the benchmark it kind of loads a series of different uh, scenarios and uh, the minimum 16 is, is actually almost unfair uh, it plays absolutely admirably uh, when we ran some earlier games Thief uh, full HD on high quality average 90 frames per second Tomb Raider 182.8 frames per so heaps and heaps more um, the big question with gaming obviously is do you go full HD, do you go 4K, GTX 970, Core i5, go full HD, glorious, go 4K, not so nice, wouldn't recommend that one little bit. Uh, the overclocking of uh, the Core i5, we, I had a look in the BIOS, uh, it, there's actually very little going on there, the V cores race from 1.3 volts to 1.4, dynamic V core has been bumped up some, and then the multiplier has been raised up as you'd expect from 35 times to 47 times to give you 4.7 gigahertz. So no funny business with bus speeds and such like, no nasties whatsoever. Uh, Obviously, it's warranted. It comes from uh, Dino PC this way. It's guaranteed, and you'd expect no problems whatsoever. This is very nice. Um, all the components in this system are quality. Uh, the brand, so we've got Intel, Corsair, Gigabyte, Palette, Samsung, Seagate, NZXT, Corsair, uh, Windows, you know, Microsoft. Uh, what's not to like? And um, we're not quite there yet. Uh, there we go. Have we finished? We're doing one more scenario and then it's quitting and it's um, going to restart. So overall, absolutely fine. And then let me just brutally turn that off and turn that off. And um, one funny thing, I've actually connected the uh, monitor to the PC over DVI, which is something that I do um, almost never. Let's just get that off so we haven't got a mirror in the way and the reason for that is that the connections on the palette graphics card it's a dual slot graphics card but uh, one slot is uh, for cooling leaving you one slot for the ports and connectors and they've got DVI three mini display port one mini HDMI no regular size ports it so happens that my um, my sole mini HDMI cable is this quite short fellow which meant I couldn't rotate the case on the turntable without pulling things apart so I've gone for DVI. Nothing wrong with DVI. Uh, and in fact, it's, it's actually quite trouble free. You haven't got to monkey around with scaling and that sort of nonsense. Uh, 
just quite funny to drag out this huge great cable. I'm so used now to HDMI and to DisplayPort. Uh, now DynaPC advises me that the ports and connectors in no way shape or form problem to them because most people that buy a PC also buy a new display. I'm not hugely surprised to learn this. Uh, after all your PC is probably three or four years old. If your display is now two years old it's uh, actually quite old and clunky in terms of resolution, brightness and so on and so forth and prices of screens have dropped dramatically in recent years. So that was a snag for me. If you're buying a monitor to go with your new PC obviously not a problem. Um, let's just turn it around the turntable so we've got your NZXT window. Let's turn that back and take the panel off so we can have a good look inside. I'll do the thumb screws, that would help, wouldn't it? And it is matter blacker than a matte black thing. Obviously, once again, pictures on Kit Guru. We've got the Samsung SSD is mounted on top of the uh, power supply cover. Illumination on the NZXT logo and underneath as well, and also on the back, which is controlled by that little button there. Uh, the Corsair H80 liquid cooler. Uh, you can control that. That's one of their I series liquid cooler. So you can control, you can monitor what the cooling is doing. You can monitor temperatures. Uh, you can change speeds or choose, you know, do you want a quiet or an aggressive profile? And then you can change the lighting in there. So if you choose, you can simply set that to red to match the NZXT lights. And it's absolutely lovely. We can have it cycling entirely up to you. Uh, cabling, it's all lovely and neat and tidy. Again, photos on Kit Guru. Uh, I, I would actually expect nothing less from Dino PC. Uh, they do build a tidy PC. And in this case, they're using quality, quality parts, which means that... Everything connects together nicely and there's no nasty mess. Let's just plonk that down there. And then turn to the back. Absolutely tidy as a tidy thing. Um, very neat job indeed. Uh, the fan hub is because NZXT has three fans at the front of the case. We have reviewed uh, this case before, not this precise colored version, but we've reviewed this case. So you have three fans down the front. The uh, Corsair, which are obviously drawing air through the case. One fan at the rear expelling air. Uh, you've got the graphics card expelling air through the, uh, the bracket and you've got the HATI here uh, which is expelling air through the top which actually means that when you look above the motherboard it's actually quite clear which is nice because if you put a liquid cooler in this section here it actually gets a bit tight for comfort. The liquid cooler is in front of the motherboard and out of the way. Um, and there is Nothing to say whatsoever about nasties. There's no bloatware whatsoever. I mean, you can't really complain about being offered McAfee or a one-year license. If you don't like it, uninstall it. Not a problem. Other than that, no nonsense whatsoever, which makes a very welcome change. Performance is exactly as good as you would expect. Skylake Core i5 is plenty of grunt for gaming. Obviously, you can all your office type stuff, and it'll just handle that standing on its head. Uh, 3D market storm through those. Cinebench either 11.5 or 15 uh, frame rates. In Cinebench 11.5, you're up to 90 frames per second. Cinebench 15, 158 frames, but huge, huge, huge gaming scores mentioned. It will do all of that. It will do everything apart from 4K, which takes you into a different league of how many GTX 980s do you want, sir? And uh, will that be an extreme edition processor you're going to pay for? Um, the money, £1,199, uh, ink that, and that's with your three-year warranty. I priced up all the components. If I had them in a big pile sat in front of me paying retail prices, they'd cost me £1,150. And I'd have to put the thing together. I'd have to obviously copy their overclock just to make my life easy. Uh, I think 50 quid of your time to build a system is um, <laughs> at the lower end of the scale entirely. If I'm entirely honest. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the warranty. If you've got any hassle, you go back to Dino PC, they sort your problem out. So you cannot complain about the pricing, uh, which is curious. I've got no complaints about the system whatsoever. I like it. It does everything you want from a gaming PC. It's shiny, it's fresh, it's lovely. I mean, you can't put anything on the top of it because of the, the layout of the NZXT chassis, which is not a problem as such. It's just an observation. Other than that, the only thing I can level against it as a not a, not a complaint um, is that I can build this PC myself if I buy all those parts by copying what Dino PC has done. Um, so in that sense it doesn't wow me quite as much as for example some shiny very thin light laptop which obviously I can't build myself or some shiny new phone. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing a whole bunch of parts but if we take that to one side which is my problem the PC itself 
absolute good piece of work. A, a very sensible balance of bling versus price versus style versus cooling. Uh, it does absolutely everything you want and uh, why would you bother building your own if they're going to supply it built for you and overclocked as well and under warranty for three whole years uh, yes nice very nice indeed and the matte black looks absolutely to die for good piece of work that dyno pc primal gt5 overclocked from the factory 1199 pounds definite winner like it a lot this is leo Wardock for kit guru